we did a little practice with the batteries for the first time yesterday, and we scored eight points in like 40 minutes, which is enough that everybody, I think, is watching us now and trying to maybe thinking that we're a, a team to, to possibly win. So we're feeling pretty good. Um, we're taking it really safe for this practice run right now. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna basically go in and drive a little bit, not do anything that's gonna make the robot possibly fall, and we're gonna walk around the course, try to touch everything, get as much information we can about the course for tomorrow as possible. One of the big things is that the terrain out there is very much not flat. It's broken cement that's at a three degree slope, so we're gonna basically try to walk around uh, just to experience walking on that terrain so we can potentially optimize things for tomorrow. Even though points might affect when we can run tomorrow, uh, we're basically not trying to score many points today, but our goal is information gathering and to practice driving because we've never had another chance to practice driving. We're not tethered, there's no gantry, we, if we fall we break today. It's the first time we're doing that, but there's just so many variables, the complexity is so high. That's what makes me nervous, is that something stupid could rob us of showing the technology. Today is not so much, today's a practice, but for tomorrow and Saturday. It was phenomenal, except for walking. Baby bird, first time out of the nest. What makes MIT software unique is their lean towards more autonomy. A lot of other teams are doing things very manually. MIT takes some of the theory that they've been developing um, and the software that they've been developing and generates an approach that lets them have a more hands-off uh, style when operating the robot. So it allows the robot to do more on its own, um, which both saves us time, uh, makes it more reliable, and more robust, the robot can control itself better than we can. Um, and by designing algorithms that allow it to do so, I think that, that gives us an advantage. Pushing forward the state of the art of autonomy is really one of the big goals of the whole DARPA program. And I think that MIT is leading the forefront of making that happen. Uh, as far as the semi-autonomous benchmark that we're trying to reach, I think we did a really good job of having a human operator approve what the robot is essentially planning to do for itself. So while it's not fully autonomous, I think that we definitely met our goal for uh, semi-autonomous. Yeah, if you go through the push-up script, you should be fine. We had a problem with the right arm and it became unresponsive and so we, we finished up, we restarted that, did the driving, the driving went great uh, and then we had them take us out of the car, put us down, we walked through the door and we started having some problems with the network. Uh, so the robot stood there for a while while we uh, restarted our networking and then after that we were kind of short on time so we walked around inside a little bit mostly to collect a map of what the, the setup is like inside the building and then we walked out. That was the first time we'd actually walked around without a safety belay. Um, and that was really exciting. Uh, it, it, it worked. I'm really glad that we had a chance to rehearse that today so that tomorrow we can go in feeling like, yes, the robot can walk around without without the belay and, and we're gonna be okay. Finally, we're here in the morning of the competition. Uh, we've been practicing again this morning, our last chance to sort of make some last minute adjustments based on what we saw with the drill and the rehearsal. We dealt with a network issue uh, on DARPA's end again last night. We had to compensate for it. We made a few other little tweaks, but pretty much now we're just trying to cool our jets, make sure our operator's feeling good, make sure the team's feeling good. We're gonna watch some of the other teams run. Uh, just try to do what we know we can do and not break anything. <laughs> As you can see here, we're 
preparing the robots. We have a few hours to do the last uh, testing, the last setup. I think we have a pretty good chance to execute all of the tasks. Uh, there are other teams that are doing pretty well as well, uh, that score all the points in the practice. At the end it might be about uh, the time that it takes for each team to, to execute the task. Because if you have teams with the same amount of points, then it goes to the time it took. Uh, so that, that might be the, the result of the competition. Probably the top three are going to score all the points. Uh, so let's see who can do that faster. Egress is the one that I think is hard for a lot of teams, but we've got completely nailed. So I'm, I'm happy to, I want to show that one off. I think we're at a disadvantage compared to the wheels. I think the wheel robots are going to do really well. I think our software is in some ways more capable, but it might be slower to let the robot make a lot of decisions. And I think we in general have been careful and some other teams are going to go more aggressive. So that might mean that they fall down and break. That might mean they screw up a task, uh, but it might also mean that they finish the points faster than us. I think we could do all the tasks pretty easily. There's a chance we could screw something up, but I, I think we could do all the tasks. It's more about not making a mistake and doing it fast enough. So we'll have to decide. I think we're going to be a little bit conservative today and then try to be more aggressive tomorrow. The question is, do we know how to be as aggressive as they do? One, two, two three. three. Yeah. All right. Good robot. Let's go. like there was a, a user error basically in the, in the way we were going through the script. We left the ankle control that was doing the throttle from the driving on, which then effectively screwed up our egress. So we practice egress a million times, but not, you know, we have only a few times been in drive, practicing the driving to egress because we can't drive in here. We can't really, there's not many places to drive at home. And so there's just a instructional error. Well, even, it, we even had it in the instructions, but we were just excited and went too fast. They ruled that if your robot starts in the car, ends out of the car without touching the car, it's successful egress. So we, a face plant is an egress if you don't touch the car, but our foot was still touching the car. Uh, that's not in the rules. So we're, uh, we're inches away from getting that egress point. They have the whole thing left-handed, even though the whole script was right-handed, and they got the rest of the points. In some ways, that's the best part when you can show that you can adapt to this stuff, right? I, nobody appreciates that. Yeah. It's hard to see, but, but you know, but that is a huge success. Yeah. <laughs> So last night, our photographer Jason Dorfman uh, sent us a set of photos that he took all day yesterday, and sort of right when we got it, we were quickly going through. And of course, I found the part when we fell ungracefully out of the car. Uh, and he happened to get this one frame where the robot was completely in the egress box with no points of contact on the car, which is technically an egress. Uh, and so. We all got really excited and we, and we showed it to the DARPA officials and they agreed that that counts as a successful egress. So now we have seven points and we are uh, the best Atlas team right now.
A few of us got here really early to just make sure we could uh, practice egress. And uh, a few things were obviously still wrong this morning. Most dramatically, when we got the robot in the car, it put its hand out and it went <laughs> and powered down. We started again, powered the robot up, same place, <laughs> it powered down. Um, so basically, after some debugging with Boston Dynamics, they decided they should replace most of the robot, <laughs> the PDB and the motor that drives the pump, which is in the heart of the robot. Um, after opening it up, it turns out that um, the PDB was extremely hot, so the motor encoder fault that they saw might have been due to the fact that the PDB overheated. Then they realized that the coolant line wasn't plugged in, so yesterday's repair failed to plug the coolant line back in which caused the PDB to fail, and almost certainly that's the reason we got our call this morning. But we continued with the repair because the smallest chance of actually just having the robot power down in the middle of the competition means we had, you know, it was better to take a two hour downtime than to risk that probability. So, it's frustrating. We also had the, sh the shoulder um, had a problem, which has been resolved at the same time. So that's a good fix. We know that was a problem. We know it's fixed. So now we're just uh, hours before the competition with an almost entirely new robot. We're going to make sure we can do what we can do. I think it'll be okay. I think we're awesome, but uh, it's it's uh, comically last minute. Think we can get this one. Boston Dynamics has been here like basically many hours fixing our robot. They are doing an outstanding job to do this and keep all other teams running as well. Uh, so just right now they are finishing fixing our robot. Uh, I think we are pretty much ready to go. We are we are going to do some tests to see how it goes. Uh, probably test again the egress task, which is the one that fell yesterday, uh, plus the, the host task, which is going to be a surprise task for today. It is enough to put your hand on top of the switch and just go straight down. And that motion has less constraints than, than this task, because in this task you have the constraint of being concentric with the hole. So once you grasp the holes, you need to go back exactly, then move to the right, and then when you're going to actually make the hose, you need to go exactly concentric with that circle. So we just got extended to 5 p.m. from 1.30. While the robot was being wheeled out, we were making last minute code changes uh, and trying to get things into shape. Uh, our initial request to extend the time was denied, uh, but the DARPA program manager was unaware that we had been down for the whole morning with hardware issues. So upon hearing that news, uh, literally at the last minute, uh, they accepted our request to extend the time. Uh, we got our fixes in and that'll give us a few more hours of practice, uh, but it also means that we're going to be going up against the best of the best at the very last uh, portion of the challenge. After all this ridiculous uh, day, we got to run finally. We got out on the course, we did our egress, which is our, my favorite thing. We were in position to win the competition. I mean, we had a time uh, when we got to the drill that could have been the winning time. Uh, we got the drill on on the first button push. He started cutting, the drill slipped away from the wall. And uh, he went around, he did not cut all the way out. It's hard for the robot and the human operator to understand whether how well they've how deep they've gone into the wall. He was suspicious, he went again, tried to cut again, he being the human operator, tried to, tried to cut again, but the drill has a five minute timeout. So at the, at the end of five minutes, the drill stops. He knew that the drill stopped. It's, at that point, it was either eight points or bust. We knew that if, if we didn't get all eight points, we wouldn't win the competition. So he did what he was supposed to do, what he should have done, he started trying to punch the wall. Um, it wasn't close enough to fall. And so uh, it ultimately knocked the robot over. That was the right thing to do. I mean, he, he had to try as hard as he could to knock the wall out. 
because otherwise that was the only way we could win. So unfortunately, when the wall didn't come out, the robot fell over and he had to go out and, uh, and, and we could only do then our favorite tasks at the end, which were the, the terrain and the stairs. I, I like walking robots and those were, that was our chance to shine at the end. But uh, it was just one little drill slip away from potentially winning the whole competition. So we did this. We competed with robots that were largely tele-operated, um, which is really what probably all you needed to do in this task. But we did it with a robot that was very autonomous. So the robot was making most of those decisions. The operator was only helping him with a few clicks. People didn't think that we could do that much with autonomy, and we showed that we could. I think we're very proud of the things we accomplished today. Like, uh, new things happened while we were executing the tasks, such as recovering on top of the terrain that is just amazing. Uh, we lost communication with the robot for a few seconds while it was walking. So actually we just sent the working plan and lost communications and then the robot walked. We didn't know and next time we got data from the field, the robot was actually at the end of the plan. Uh, so those are things that I think any roboticist would be like amazed by. Uh, so I mean, that's very cool. <laughs> We faced all sorts of problems. We've, we've addressed them with dignity and, and intelligence, and, and I'm just so proud. I don't, I don't think there's another group around that could have solved all the problems we solved this week. I mean, unbelievable debugging. Uh, I wish we could have come home with that. We, we deserved it, but uh, it wasn't quite our day.